use Bishop Miller and have him come up here and just uh, let him loose on the word that he has. And it's going to be, it's good. I've already heard it. I've heard it for already once. And uh, I'm, I'm going to, I'm excited because there's some stuff I missed in the first service. I'm going to put it in my notes in the second service. So, but uh, as part of our ongoing, you know, a mission, as we talked about, to help people know God, find hope, and to make a difference. Um, and I'm, I'm telling you this for a point of prayer. Tomorrow morning, I'm going to be leaving to go uh, fly to Havana, Cuba, to meet with Pastor Miguel and Erie, um, and the work that we've been doing. We've helped them uh, build an outreach headquarters there, and meeting uh, an outreach uh, building for the, uh, some of the outreach things that they're doing. I'm going to be taking some supplies down there. It's kind of one of these, we put it together kind of quickly, so I'm going by myself, and this is why I'm asking you guys to pray for me, okay? Because I'm carrying numerous suitcases by myself, going through customs with a bunch of stuff by myself, uh, which I'm a big boy, I can do it, but it's a little bit trickier um, in, in that. And, uh, and also we'll be talking about, you know, some future projects to be able to come, take some people down there with us and, and how we can make that happen. And uh, so I just want you to pray for, for that, if you would, for the wisdom as we're talking, discussing some of those things um, and, and customs. And then as we go through and meeting with them and customs again and all the different stuff that you get the point, what I'm saying. Okay, so, so uh, that's going to be tomorrow morning. I know my flight's about 10 o'clock in the morning and uh, so uh, it's, it, I know it's going to be good. It's going to be a productive meeting. And uh, I just want to thank you because we really, our challenge really is that we want to help people know God and help them be able to find hope and make a difference. And that's not just here. It's, it's wherever God leads us. And, and we've been connected to the work in, in Cuba, and, and uh, you guys have helped make a huge difference there, really helping them jump decades ahead in the work that they're doing in the, in the city of Placetas. And we are so, I'm so appreciative of you coming along with that and helping us. Uh, and because of your giving, it's enabling us to do that. We're taking some equipment, some things down. I, I, we, me, me, myself, and I are taking some equipments down there. And it's all because of your continual giving supporting. So you're not just helping to pay the light bill. You're helping to do things outside of here. Amen. So thank you. I just want to say a big thank you to you and also to be able to pray for that trip for me. Well, hey, of course, this morning, um, I just want to introduce a friend of our ministry here. Uh, we've been blessed to have him so many years coming and be able to share in our life. He speaks all around the world, literally. He's a, a pastor of the Gate Church in Oklahoma City. He's also over the Destiny Network, which is a global organization that is teaching and training leaders and pastors and doing a tremendous, amazing work. And uh, honestly, we were so blessed to have him. He gets invitations all the time. I was with him yesterday. He was getting all kind of invitations to come. And I'm sitting there thinking, hallelujah, we got him. Hallelujah, he's here, you know. I don't have to go through all those things. Don't tell him I said that. But, but you know, but literally, it, it is great that he, he has a heart for us. And he's invested into not only my life personally and our ministry personally, and my family personally, uh, I'm just honored because of the person that he is. Open up your heart. Get ready for what God wants to speak to you today because it is a great word that will change your life. Just welcome Bishop Tony Miller as he comes to share today. <clears throat> Thank you, Bishop. Good morning. Amen. Good morning, everyone. Is it well with you? Turn and look at your neighbor and say, I'd have been the best looking person here if you hadn't come. Come on, just tell them. <laughs> Praise the Lord. What a great delight it is to be back in Rawway at Oasis Christian Center. It, uh, is this team incredible? Pastor Fred, the worship team, the whole ministry team. They're incredible. And I'm honored. I don't, I don't even know how many years I've been coming. Uh, I had hair when I started. I don't know how long ago it was, but... We're so honored that you're here today to be a part of an exciting church that I believe is making a difference in this region and touching lives for the glory of Jesus. And how many of you know it's, it's always uh, incredibly beneficial to be a part of a life-giving church? How many of you are glad you thank God for the church that you attend? Would you give the Lord a great praise for this house? I, uh, I want to do a couple of things. I want to give some things away. I, I, it's Christmas time. I, I just want to bless people if I can. On the screen, there is a devotional called Positioned. How many of you know if you're in real estate, the whole thing about real estate is called location, 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 right? How many of you know if you're a follower of Christ, the issues of your life are about location, location, location? The Bible says continually in the New Testament, we're more than conquerors in Christ. I can do all things through Christ. I'm victorious in Christ. In other words, I have to find my place in Him. And this devotional is really something you can use in the morning, at the evening. It's just a time for you to have meditation, reflect. 
Uh, there's a worship couple on Steve and Lori, Lori Ward. Stephen and Lori Ward are part of the worship that's on the CD. It's a free gift to you. If you'll text that number, it'll take you through a series of things just to uh, tell you what to do, and you can download that, that, C, that CD, and it'll be my gift to you for Christmas. Praise the Lord. I want you to be properly positioned in Jesus. Amen. And then in the back, there's other materials that are available for people who would like to. How many of you have children somewhere between babies and 10 years old or grandchildren? Hold your hand up if you have children or grandchildren that are old. I have a, several years ago, I went into a studio and just made a CD specifically geared towards kids to be played over them at night when you put them to bed or when you put them down for naps. Daycares buy these literally by the hundreds from us uh, because they give them to families. I speak over your children that they were born with purpose. They're going to live with destiny. They're going to walk in purity. They're going to live in power because God has a plan for their life. There's a children's choir on here. There's a lullaby that was put on here. Um, I, I thank God for the opportunity to bless another generation. Can you just give that away? Somebody raise your hand if you want that right there. I'm going to give it to you for free if you've got a child. How many of you ever had trouble with your prayer life? If you ever had trouble with your prayer life, hold your hand up. High. Let me see your hand. If you didn't got your hand up, you lie. <laughs> don't look around and see who didn't have their hands up. Just know they don't tell the truth. I spent time in my life just saying, I want, to, I want to be able to talk to God. I want to know what it's like to have a conversation with the Lord. I want to develop a prayer life because prayer is not a religious activity. It's a conversation that you have with God on a continual basis. It's not just for you to talk to him, but for him to talk to you. Yeah. Amen. So I, I, may, I used to make prayer lists. I'd say these are the five things I'm going to pray for, and I'm going to spend 30 minutes in prayer today. And I got done my five things, and I thought, what am I going to do with the next 25 minutes? I don't know what to pray for these next 25 minutes. So I created a tool for people to pray with. You can play it in your automobile. You can play it in the morning when you're getting ready. I literally just lead you in prayer. I put you on a track to pray, where you pray through certain things over your life every day, where you learn to pray every day, God, give me today my daily bread. I mean, you know, daily bread doesn't come a week at a time. It's not weekly bread, it's daily bread. So how do I learn to find my daily bread in the presence of God? What, is he, what he has for me today? So <clears throat> this is called Daybreak, Your Journey in the Secret Place. Just give that to somebody, would you? And there's a whole lot of teaching CDs at the back. Um, some of them are on CD, some of them are on drop cards. These drop cards, if you just go on, it's got a code. It comes right down to your phone or whatever it is you put it, you use, listen to things on. This one is called I'm Altered at an Altar. There's one back there called Breaking Nets, how to move from a life of emptiness to a place of abundance. I mean, you know, God wants you to live in the overflow. Amen. Jesse DePlanis said to me one day, he said, you can either live out of the bottom of the barrel or you can live out of the overflow. It doesn't take any more faith to live out of the overflow. Amen. So I choose to live out of the overflow. Amen. Give that away to somebody for me, would you? Here's what you do when you help us at the table. Uh, I'm building, we are, uh, for, for over, since 1985, I've traveled to nations. 375,000 pastors uh, have gone through our training schools in 78 nations of the world. This is a building I'm building presently in Kampala, Uganda. Uh, it's a training center for African church planters. Uh, we believe in God to continue to plant churches all across the continent of Africa. That building is uh, nearing completion. The windows are in on, the, on this far end. Uh, there's an auditorium that seats about 1,000 people. The back side is all a, de a developmental school that has 10 classrooms. We're training 40 church planters. We will plant 40 churches every nine months over the next 10 years. <laughs> Hallelujah. And so your, your giving today enables us to do that, and majority of those church planters are committed to going to the north of Africa where Islam has had a stronghold and plant churches in cities and raise up the cross of Jesus Christ for the, for, the, for the cause of the kingdom. So thank you today for stopping at the table on your way out and helping us do what God's called us to do. Stand with me, would you? It's our custom to stand for the reading of the word. Thank you today again, Pastor Fred, for the honor of being here. <clears throat> I want you to turn with me to Matthew chapter 14. Matthew chapter 14, if you have your Bibles or... It'll be on the screen for us. Matthew 14, verse number 22 through 29. I want to speak, if I can, family, for a little bit this morning on this subject. How many of you know normal is not working? 
I'm going to try that again. I ain't getting no help. I'm not feeling no love. Normal is not working. A lot of people say, I just want to be normal, but normal is not working. So what does the Bible say about becoming people who are the exception? What does it mean to be a person who lives as the exception? Everybody else in your neighborhood is depressed. You got joy. Everybody else is frustrated at work. You live in peace. How do you become the person that is the person of exception? Now listen, anything that you believe that you live with exceptionalism or believe that you are superior does not reflect the kingdom. I'm not talking to people about being better. I'm talking about being different. I'm going to try that one more time. I'm not talking to you about being better. I'm talking to you about being different. Because the Bible specifically says multiple times that those who are followers of Christ will be different kinds of people. Matthew chapter 14, beginning verse number 22. It says, immediately Jesus made his disciples get into the boat and go before him to the other side while he sent the multitudes away. And when he had sent the multitude away, he went up on the mountain by himself to pray. Now when evening came, he was alone there. But the boat was in the middle of the sea, tossed by the waves, for the wind was contrary. Now in the fourth watch of the night, Jesus went to them walking on the sea. And when the disciples saw him walking on the sea, they were troubled, saying, It's a ghost. They cried out for fear. But immediately Jesus spoke to them, saying, Be of good cheer, it is I. Do not be afraid. And Peter answered him and said, Lord, if it is you, command me to come to you on the water. So he said, come. Everybody say that with me. Come. And when Jesus had come down out of the boat, and when Peter had come down out of the boat, he walked on the water to go to Jesus. Father, I pray over these next few minutes in the name of Jesus that you'll download from heaven into our spirit, a spirit of revelation. I pray that there be an awakening. I pray that faith would arise. I thank you today that you're causing your distinction to be upon our life by the power of your spirit, that we can be witnesses to the name of Jesus, of your great grace. I pray today for the ability to communicate, to speak. Give me entrance into every man and woman's heart in this room. I give you the glory and the honor in Jesus' name. Everybody shout amen. amen. High five three people and tell them we're going to be people of exceptions. Come on, just tell them, would you? Hallelujah. You may be seated. Praise the Lord. Give me just a couple of minutes to walk through this passage of Scripture, and uh, we'll pray and see what, see what God says to us. Let me share something with you that is it's very, very strategic for you and I to learn as people who are followers of Christ. And that is, is that God is always intentional. God is always intentional. God's not random. In other words, if God does something, he does it intentionally. He does it on purpose. Would we all agree? And at the same time, if he doesn't do something, he does it intentionally. Most of us have no consternation over him doing things that we wanted him to do and believe that he did them on purpose. When I began to have all kinds of consternation is when I believe he didn't do something I thought he should have, and he did it on purpose. But the reality is, is that God is always intentional. It's because he always has something good in store for his people. How many of you know you and I can't always see the end of the story, so we have to know how to believe him in the middle of the story? We have to know he's a good, good God. Can anybody help me? Amen? He's a good, good God. So therefore, his intentions for his people, watch this, one of his intentions is that his people 
be the exception. Now, the, now Webster, in, in, in the Webster Dictionary, the word exception means this. It means to be an anomaly or to deviate from the norm, to not be normal. The Bible constantly uses various terms to talk about how the people of God are not to be the norm, but to be distinct. The Bible uses terms like your salt and your light. The Bible uses terms like you're chosen, you're a special people, you're peculiar, you're different, to mark those who are followers of Christ. In fact, whatever happens in the world, watch this, whatever happens in the world is not to be an indicator of what happens to me. Because I'm not the product of my environment, I'm the product of my belief system. I'm going to try that one more time. I'm not the product of my environment. I'm the product of my belief system. You will always live what you believe. That's why when we try to change people's behavior, they always stumble. Because your behavior doesn't change till your belief system changes. It's what you believe about you that keeps tripping you up. In Exodus chapter 8, the Bible says that there was a time in Egypt when there was a great plague going on. And when the plague was going on, God was judging Egypt. But watch this. The people of God lived in the midst of Egypt while the plague was going on. Can you put up Exodus chapter 8, verse number uh, 22? But on that day, I will deal, deal, deal differently. Somebody say differently. With the land of Goshen, where the land of Goshen is where the people of God lived, where my people live. No swarm of flies will be there, so that you will know that I, the Lord, am in this land. Verse 23, I will make a distinction between my people and your people. This sign will occur tomorrow. In other words, God was saying to the people of God, watch this, the whole world may be in chaos, but you're going to know what's going on. Everybody in your neighborhood may be wanting to flip out, but you're going to be able to understand the direction of what's coming into your life. Why? Because I am desiring people who know how to be the distinction. Now, please understand this. God never says that his people will live in a bubble. He says you will live in a world that's chaotic. You will live in a world that is tumultuous. You'll live in the midst of people who have all kinds of problems. But here's the, here's the point. But while you're in the midst of people who experience what you experience, your outcomes will be different. And the reason your outcomes will be different is because I'm going to be in the middle of your circumstance. I will not let you be overtaken by normal. I'll let you be the exception to what happens in your generation. Am I helping anybody? Listen to me closely. Exceptions do not mean that God causes denial to come into your life. It's not the dismissing of social norms. But rather, it's God saying, let me stay in the middle of your circumstance so I can prove to you that I can make you a witness and an example of my great grace even in the midst of a world that seems to be going crazy around you. Let me tell you some exceptions in the Bible. 90-year-old women don't normally have babies. I ain't, I ain't got no help in here, y'all. Maybe grandma got pregnant last week. I don't know, but it did. How many of you know water don't just part and people walk across on dry, dry ground? Walls don't normally fall when people shout at them. Birds don't normally come and feed prophets down by a brook. That's the exception. That's not the norm. Dead people don't normally get up out of graves and show up and say, I'm come to life again. But how many of you know if God can do that for Sarah and Abraham, if he can do that for Moses, if he can do that for Elijah, if he can do that for Jesus, he can do that at your house. Somebody in here ought to say praise the Lord. Now in our text, there's an inter it's an interesting passage of Scripture. Because the Bible talks and the focus of the text is in the midst of something very normal that becomes very supernatural. It deals with the fact that two men 
we're walking. How many of you know that walking, while it's something we all should be grateful for, that you can walk, how many of you know that while walking is something to be grateful for, it's not that unordinary? I was in Rockefeller Center yesterday. There was millions of people walking. Felt like millions. Lots of people were walking. I got tired of walking. <laughs> but walking is not that fantastic. Adam walked, the Bible says. The Bible says Moses walked. The Bible says Joshua walked. You walk. But what Matthew 14 points out is something entirely different. The Bible points out, watch this, the Bible points out that two men walked on something most people drowned in. They walked on water. Now, first one, first one is Jesus. Jesus walked on water. Everybody goes, Okay. That's cool. I mean, Jesus can do anything, right? Oh, come on, I ain't got no help. Jesus can do anything. It's not, that's, not, that's not a big deal. Oh, Jesus walked on water. Okay, praise the Lord. Jesus walked on water. But, but that's Jesus. Jesus can do anything. He can even make the jets win. Come on, somebody, help me. I'm just kidding. Please don't throw any. Listen, listen, listen. Jesus can do anything. But hold on about this second guy. If this would have just been a story about Jesus walking on the water, we couldn't have taken time out of Sunday morning to talk about it because, because Jesus can do anything. But this second guy, this second guy's got my attention. Because this second guy walking on water, he's a little like me and a little bit like you. He's a little bit temperamental. He's got a New York attitude. <laughs> a little touchy. A bit inconsistent. But he does something normal people don't do. He walks on water. Now, the context of this story is interesting because it comes, because the Bible begins in verse 22. It says, and immediately he told them, get into the boat and go to the other side. Immediately after what? It was immediately after having fed the 5,000 with a little boy's lunch. He basically fed really probably fifteen to 20,000 people with a little boy's lunch. Because in Bible days, they didn't count women in the statistics because in those days, women were of no value. Aren't you glad for Jesus? Jesus is the only religious leader in history that gives value to women. I thought I'd have like standing applause right there, but Buddha doesn't, Confucius doesn't, Islam doesn't, but Jesus gives value to women. In fact, had it not been for the women, we wouldn't even know Jesus had risen from the dead. If you read the whole story of the resurrection, the men went in and said, hmm, he ain't here. I don't, I don't know. I'm going fishing. The women came in, saw he wasn't there, and how many of you know a woman cannot leave well enough alone? They're like, somebody's going to give me an answer. <laughs> I don't know what you did with him, but he's somewhere. Somebody's going to give me an answer. Thank God for the women. Somebody ought to say, thank God for the women. So they fed 5,000 with a little boy's lunch. Here's the, here's, the, here's the story. Jesus gives them that story for a reason because he's trying to put some exposure in their minds to the reality of his power. He's trying to let them know, I can take care of everything in your life, but you have to understand something. Watch this. Two things he was showing them. Number one, I can't multiply anything you don't give me. I ain't got no love on that side. Let me preach over here. I can't multiply anything you won't give me. How many of you know if you, can't give him, if you don't give him something, he can't multiply it back to you? Am I helping anybody? Anything times zero is zero. Second of all, he was telling them, your miracles always come from unexpected places. 
you think you need a buffet. I just need a little boy's lunch. I can take your little and turn it into much. And he said to them, I want you to get in the boat, go to the other side, and I will meet you there. Watch this. You get in the boat and go. I'm going to go pray. Jesus goes to pray. They spend all night rowing. They have rowed all night. The Bible says they have gone through about seven or eight hours of rowing because the, the, the miracle of the feeding of the 5,000 ends at sundown, which is somewhere around 6 o'clock in the evening. He comes walking to them on the water sometime between 3 and 6 a.m. So they have been rowing literally for seven or eight hours at least. How many of you know he got to where they were in quick, a quick little walk when they had rowed for several hours? Why? Because anybody that knows how to pray can always accelerate time. He did in less time what it took them a whole lot of time to do. And here's the key. I want you to see this. The Bible says that he comes walking to them on the water, and they did not recognize him because the Bible says they were in the middle of a storm. Somebody in this room today needs to know something. In the storms of your life, Jesus will always show up in ways you've never seen him before. You keep looking for Jesus in the same way, but he shows up sometimes in your life in ways you've never seen him. And the Bible says that when he showed up walking on the water, the guys in the boat said he's a ghost. Could it be that some of us in this room have missed Jesus in the middle of our storms, not because he wasn't present, but because we didn't discern him in the form that he was? Maybe God sent you an answer and you didn't recognize it. Maybe God showed up when you thought he wasn't there. Because, see, those guys were rowing in the middle of a storm, and their temptation was to say, where's God? I wonder how many of us in this room at some time or another said, where's God? I'm out here rowing away. Where is God in the middle of all this? Did he leave me out here to just die? Did he tell me to go somewhere, and I don't have any clue where he's at? I'm doing what he told me, and I don't see him anywhere. And maybe, just maybe, he is there, but you think he's a ghost. The Bible says that they perceive him to be a ghost. Now watch this. And Peter, in the boat, says, that's not a ghost. That's the Lord. That's the Lord. And from the boat, he cries out to Jesus, If that be you, Lord, bid me come. And Jesus says to him, Come. Let's look at this. Three things I want you to see. If, you, if you're going to be a water walker and not be a boat rower, three things are going to have to happen. Number one, the first one is this. You're going to have to allow God to give you exposure to things you've never been exposed to before. You're going to have to let God open your mind and your life to things you're not familiar with. Hold on to your seat. Everybody still in love with me? Listen to me closely. It's not what you know that's killing you. It's what you don't know that's killing you. Hosea said, my people perish... For lack of knowledge. There's something that you need to know you don't know. But if you believe you already know everything there is to know, you don't open yourself to ever being exposed to the things you don't know. And exposure becomes the catalyst for growth. Listen to me closely. There's a lot of people that never grow into their full potential. It's not because Jesus isn't real and it isn't because the devil's a big devil. It's because they never opened their life to anything beyond their own life and their own experiences. You have to be willing to say, Jesus, expose me to things I've never been exposed to. Open me up to things about you I've never learned. I have not got you figured out. There are things about you you are still trying to teach me and I'm willing to let you show me your in ways like I've never seen you before. 
Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Because watch this. Ignorance is a prison that the enemy locks people up in. Because if he can keep you in ignorance, he can keep you bound. That's why he wants to keep you out of your Bible. I ain't got no love. I don't feel no love right now. I need somebody to... That's why you can go from Sunday to Sunday and go, where did I leave that Bible? I need to find it. Because it's not a church toting book. It's a life-giving book. But you can have all the answers for this and the secrets to how to turn your life into something incredible. But if you never read the code, you stay ignorant. Because you never are exposed to what it is. The Bible says that, the Bible teaches that Satan traffics in darkness. How I many of you know darkness? The Bible says that light means that you have understanding. Darkness means you have no understanding. Literally, Satan traffics in the realms you don't understand. Everything you don't understand, he'll take advantage of your life and imprison you with it. That's why he wants you to say, I believe that's the Lord. But I need to know that that's him. And I need to go after and be exposed to things I've never been exposed to before in my life. Am I helping anybody today? How many of you know exposure means that you recognize, watch this. Peter decided, I'm going to be the exception. I am not going to be the norm. There were 12 other guys in that boat with him. And 11 of them said absolutely nothing. The other 11 did not lift their voice. They were totally silent. Peter said, I believe that's God. I'm going to call out to him. Peter decided to do something even though nobody else did anything. I came to talk to somebody today. I want to ask you a question. Who are your 11 that you're rowing with? Whose opinion is it that keeps you locked up in the boat? Who is it that keeps telling you that you can never be what God called you to be? Or you can never do what you've been dreaming about doing? Who is it that told you you might as well give up hope of ever owning your own home? Or ever being free from addiction? Or ever seeing your family be something different than it's been before? Because I came to announce to you today, I don't care if you came from a bad neighborhood or a good neighborhood. God wants wants to make you the exception. Somebody ought to shout in here. Some people say, well, you're young. You're too old. You can't do it. I had a guy recently who was wanting to start a business. He said, but I'm 60 years old. I said to him, have you ever heard of Colonel Sanders? Kentucky Fried Chicken, he was 66 years old when he started his first restaurant. And by the time he died, it had become the third largest fast food chain in the world. Are you with me? You're not too old. You've been too limited in your exposure. You're not too young. You're not too fill in the blank. You're not too much this or that. Your exposure to him will let you recognize, you know what? I serve the God of the impossible. I serve the God who can do anything. I'm ready to be the exception. I'm tired of being normal. Watch this. Numbers chapter 14. Put this scripture up here for me. The Bible says that there was a whole group of people that went in to view out the land of promise. But only two people came back with a good report. Ten of them came back with a bad report. Look what it said. But because my servant Caleb has a, say it out loud, a different spirit and follows me wholeheartedly, I'll bring him into the land he went to. I wonder today in Rahway, in Oasis Christian Center, who in the room will say, you know what? I want to be one of those men. I want to be one of those women. I got a different spirit. Everybody else says we can't do it. I want to say we can do it. Everybody else is wanting to be depressed. I'm going to be full of joy. Everybody else wants to live in confusion. I'm going to let the peace of God rule in my life. I'm going to be the exception. I don't have to be the norm. And could it be 
Could it be that God, when he exposes you to new things, doesn't do it to tease you? Maybe he exposes you not to frustrate you, but to inspire you. That's why your story matters. Because every time you tell your friends, I too was bound, but Jesus set me free. You know, the neighborhood I came from, everybody was getting a divorce. But not in my house. I choose to be the exception. It started with exposure. Second of all, there had to be an invitation. Somebody shout an invitation. Peter never left the boat till Jesus invited him. I want you to hear this. Please don't miss what I'm about to say. Could it be that an invitation has gone out to our lives and he's waiting on our response to the invitation? Maybe it's in your desire to obey his invite that you experience the miracle. Peter could have said, no, I want to I see a miracle, then I'll respond. And Jesus was saying to Peter, no, you respond, and you'll see a miracle. I believe there's a voice calling this house. I believe Oasis Christian Center is not going to be a place filled with just people full of normalness. I believe it's going to be a place filled with folks who will say we will be the exception and we will be able, we will believe God to step into arenas that have never been stepped in before. We'll reach people nobody else is reaching. We'll believe for families to be changed that nobody thought could be changed. And we'll step out and walk even when the wind's blowing. We'll walk when other people tell us that we can't do it. Because we believe the voice of the one calling us is greater than the voice inside of us saying, stay in the boat. We hear the voice of a living God. If that's you, why don't you give him a great big praise today? close with this. Listen to me closely. You have to be exposed to something beyond yourself. Can I say this? If you're, if you are the center of your world, you live in a world way too small. See, that's really good, Bishop. Praise the Lord. I think you ought to say that again. Maybe God's getting ready and wanting to do big things in your life. So he's exposing you to possibilities that you never thought were possible. Well, this morning in my hotel room, the Holy Spirit said to me, there are people, I'm challenging them to step out and build businesses. I'm, step, I'm causing them to step out and be an example to their entire family. Nobody else in your family has ever walked with Jesus, but you get to be the exception. And you think you're awkward, but the reality is you're just a forerunner. You're not awkward. You are waiting on the rest of the people you're influencing to catch up to what has already happened in your life. So don't let your awkwardness of being different make you feel like you're not important because it's your uniqueness that makes you valuable Amen. hallelujah nobody ever turns their head on a highway out here to look at a Ford Focus but guys will stop at the corner to watch a Lamborghini go by why? because there's millions of Ford Focuses God's looking for something that is the exception. That's what he wants to do in your life. He wants you to be the exception. As to be exposure, there's an invitation. Here's the final thing. Peter had to take the initiative. In other words, watch this. Jesus said to him, come. Everybody say that with me. Come. Now, how many of you are like me? I would have liked Jesus to give a little bit more explanation. <laughs> what do you mean, come? 
Can you, can you break down the scientific thing that's going to happen here? Because this is H2O, and there's a law called gravity, and I know that when I step out on something that's liquid, it does not have the ability to break the law of gravity, and it's not... Uh, what, what, uh, what are you going to do here? Or how many of you would have done something like this? Okay, I, I'll come, but how many steps? Sure, I'll, I'll go to the new believers class, or I'll go to the discipleship class how many weeks or what if it, Peter Peter probably would want to do this Jesus uh, I'm, I'm going to step out but will you meet me halfway Jesus didn't say anything about the scientific nature of water. He didn't say anything about how many steps. He didn't say I'm going to meet you halfway. All he said was So the question to you today is, you say, but I want an exceptional marriage. Well, then let me ask you a question. Is come enough? Or are you saying things like this? I'll love him when he starts loving me. I'll forgive them when they start forgiving me. Or have you heard a voice say come see listen to me closely the Bible declares the steps of a righteous man are ordered by the Lord please don't miss what I'm about to say Jesus can order your steps for you he just can't take them See, the truth of the matter is, is that oftentimes we pray for strength and God can strengthen us, but God can't be courageous for us. There has to come a time in our life that we say, I'm going to quit analyzing this and I'm going to start responding to this. Can I tell you something? It, it does not make sense to the normal man to know that if I give, my life will enlarge. Because we live in a world that's full of greed. But God said, you want to be the exception? Learn to release what's in your hand and watch what I do with what's in my hands. The world says, get even. God says, pray for those who despitefully use you. The world says, you got a right to be mad. The kingdom says, if you're my child, you're going to be the exception to the story. Why? Because we serve a God who specializes in doing unbelievable supernatural things. And he wants to make you the exception. Watch this. And even, you say, but Bishop, you should read the rest of the story because Peter, Peter began to sink. Took his eyes off Jesus, started watching the storm. He began to sink. Yeah, he did. He did. He did. But listen to me. Even when he started sinking, he didn't cry for the guys in the boat to throw him a life raft. He still cried to Jesus and said, save me. Because he recognized them boat rowers can't help me. They can't fix me. But the one I'm pursuing and the one I'm responding to, he has the capacity, even when I'm sinking, to pick me up out of the thing I'm sinking in. I don't know who I came to talk to today, but I hear the Lord saying, I will reach down and pick you up even when you're drowning if you'll respond to me in faith. The choice today is this. You're either going to be a boat rower or you're going to be a water walker. Boat rowers are very normal. Water walkers are the exception. God wants you to be the exception. Stand with me, would you? 
all over this building, just before Pastor Fred comes, I want to pray. I'm honored today to be able to share with you My wife is the incredible exception. My wife and I, four months before we were married, we were engaged in planning our marriage when her dad walked out on her mom. My wife's parents, father's never served the Lord, never to this day. My wife had nobody in her family that knew anything about walking with Jesus. But she purposed in her life I'm going to be the exception to what went on in my house. Now today, her sister's born again. Her mama's faithful in church. Our children, I have three children that are grown and served God and seven grandchildren that are in the house of the Lord. You say, how'd that happen? Somebody decided not to be normal because normal ain't working. Somebody's got to be the exception in your house. There are people in this room today, you may have been coming to church for a while, and you keep analyzing this thing, and you analyze it all the way into the place of paralysis. You've tried to figure God out and waiting on it to be figured out before you make a move. But may I be a voice that speaks to you today and say this, he's just waiting on you to say, is that you? See, well, it wasn't God's idea for Peter to walk on water. God didn't say, anybody out there want to walk on water? It was in Peter to say, I want to be different. And Peter said, if it's you, bid me come. I wonder who in this room has been hearing the voice of the Lord say, come. Because you've been crying out to be different. Because today I want to pray for you. I don't know who I'm talking to, but I know God sent me to some people in this room. When I get to three, if that's you, you say, Bishop, I'm tired of normal. Normal ain't working for me. I'm ready, to be ex I'm ready to be the exception. I'm ready to be the marriage that doesn't break up. I'm ready to raise the kids that don't go into all kinds of bondage. I'm ready to be the person at work that doesn't go off the handle every week. I'm ready to be the exception to the, to the rule. When I get to three, if that's you, I just want you to lift your hand high. I'm going to pray for you today. One, two, three, all over the room. Hands go up. Father. I thank you today for people in this room who's got their hands lifted. I thank you today that your Holy Spirit knows each one of them by name and you know us personally. And I'm asking you now in Jesus' name that you'll speak specifically to every individual in the room. And I pray, Holy Spirit, that you, they will hear the voice of the Lord saying, Come, 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 come. Come out of the things that have been normal. Come out of your complacency. And I thank you, Lord, that because of the work of your Spirit in us today, we will be the exception. I thank you, Lord, today that when we get bad reports, physically bad reports, we'll be the exception. Disease doesn't have to destroy us. We can be the healed of the Lord. Depression doesn't have to take us out. Joy that's unspeakable will fill our lives. I thank you we don't have to live in bondage. We can enjoy the freedom of the Lord. I thank you because, Jesus, you are the overcoming one who brought us the victory. Today, we can choose to say, as a follower of Christ, I choose to be the exception and not the norm for the glory of your name in Jesus mighty name and everybody shouted amen come on give the Lord a great big praise offering did you enjoy that I told I promised you I told you it's gonna be good now take it let's put it in action today amen let's put it let's let this week be a different week amen so we're gonna take those steps hey thank you guys for being here this morning uh, I know I'm gonna be back next Sunday so remember keep the trip I have coming up this week in prayer, I'll be speaking next Sunday. I'm not, it's not a vacation. Amen. I'll be back here. So, you know, but uh, love you guys. Thank you for being here. Be blessed. Have an amazing day, an amazing week. God bless you. If you need prayer, of course, our team will be up front. We'd love to pray for you.